everybody. Welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today I'm with Delbert and we're out near Osgood, Indiana at the old High Bridge Railroad Trestle going over Lawfrey Creek. Hi Delbert, how are you today? Glad to be with you. Can you tell us a little bit about this trestle? Well, the trestle is uh, the end of a long story, really. Okay. It has to start with the uh, with the railroad to begin with. Okay. Back in uh, about the 1850s, they needed to get to St. Louis with a railroad line, and from Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. So they uh, they started out laying out a track in about 1848 or 50, and when they got uh, got to Osgood, they uh, encountered uh, a uh, kind of a catastrophe with it when they got to the uh, main trestle. But in order to save money, instead of going over a big trestle, they uh, followed the low ground uh, from Pierceville onto Osgood. And when they'd done that, uh, they stayed on a low level and they could cross Lockery Creek with just a few feet high. Huh. So that, uh, that simplified things. Well, that worked for about 40 years. And uh, the O&M Railroad then sold out partly to B&O. O&M stood for what? Uh, Ohio and Missouri. Okay. And uh, when they, uh, so they kind of merged at that time, but uh, that was around uh, 1898, and they, they all decided that uh, they needed a better route. This, uh, three, this route here through Delaware and stuff, it had so many curves and, and fills and stuff, and it didn't hold the track, and it, it was long. So they had it resurveyed, and when they surveyed it, uh, they come out of Pierceville and come right across, and when everything went fine till they got to Lockery Creek, and they needed a trestle, <laughs> and uh, a so big uh, a big trestle, and uh, so with the engineers they laid one out, and uh, it wasn't long they started construction, and uh, in about 1901, and when they got the uh, the piers all the uh, buttons was laid to one contractor, and uh, the steel work was for the American Bridge Company, okay. and uh, so anyway. Uh, the, uh, they poured all the pillars, there's 44 pillars underneath there. Wow. 44 pillars. And, uh, and they made them out of a, a new type of cement they had at the time. They said it was just as good as stone. So then, then they placed uh, the, the uprights for about 60 feet tall on those. So then they, uh, they started laying them across there and they was, uh, they'd lay a 30 foot section and a 60 and a 30 and 60, they had 11, 11 of each one. And then when they got ready to go over the creek, they needed a longer section, they put up a 90-foot section. And, uh, and that was, uh, in prior days, they uh, used a kind of a scaffolding to lay the main section from the top. Well, the engineer at that time said, I've got a better idea, I think it'll work. So we uh, got some hoists and stuff, and see the track at that time had come in from both sides. And they hey. could, yeah, the, the new track come in both ways. They could come from both sides. Yeah. And that, that gave them something to work with. And they got their, uh, they, they brought the, the main section down and laid it down at the bottom of the creek. And, uh, and he had two winches and so forth like that. And they hooked to that 90 foot section. And in five minutes, they had that section setting up on top. And in 10 minutes more, they had it secured. Really? Yeah. And the whole, the whole construction business, they constructed that bridge in 26 days. This whole bridge? That whole bridge, yes, sir. Days. The seal they'd done in 26 days. Isn't that amazing? It, it's beyond belief. And uh, they had as high as 150 men that worked on it. And it was and, built in 1901? Yeah. And uh, on uh, about, I think, on May the 18th, the first uh, trains rolled across it. And this is still the original this, bridge? This is the original bridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and uh, the main sections there, they're actually about, uh, those sections are about 10 feet tall, really. That, that steel is actually about 10 feet tall. Wow. And weighed tons and tons. Uh, but uh, so, anyway. Uh, as soon as they got her laid like that, they run the trains over it. The first trains uh, only was allowed 15 miles an hour. And after they got, so they said it was gonna hold up, they stayed there. <laughs> but uh, during World War I and II, uh, during World War I, I think they had army guards guarded it. And during World War II, civilian guards guarded it on both ends. Okay. For, just to keep it safe. Security. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so uh, that, uh, uh, and, trains at that time, they ran fast. They, there was two trains, uh, particularly they call them the National Limited. They run between Cincinnati and uh, I think St. Louis maybe. And uh, they were fast trains. And they, I guess they slowed down when they crossed here. But, uh, but anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's the story of High Bridge pretty well. And huh. they named it called, and it's the highest bridge <laughs> in Indiana uh, of, that, of that design. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
And, uh, well, well, I heard there's another bridge that you want to talk to us about, the Four Arch Stone Bridge. Yeah, uh, I, I really know more about that really than I do uh, this because uh, I rode over it for 12 years twice a day on a school bus. Okay, well, why don't we go on over there and check that one out? Okay, we can do that. Okay, yep. that sounds good. Let's go. Let's go. We're all ready. And here we are at the Straber Four Stone Arch Bridge just outside of Osgood, Indiana. Is that correct? That's right. About, about yeah. 30 and a half miles out of Osgood, probably. Okay. Yeah. And what, what can you tell us about this beautiful yeah. bridge that we got here? Well, I know something about it because I went across it for 12 years twice a day going to school. Did you? Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, according to Dr. Cooper, this bridge was built in probably about 1908. It, uh, it's 80 feet long, and uh, it consists of four 20-foot sections, and, uh, and each one of those sections is probably about 10 or 11 feet above the water line. Okay. And uh, a lot of the stone came from local quarry, and, and some come from always a good quarry, and, uh, and they were manufactured stones. The, uh, the whole roadway is a little over 16 feet wide. Okay. And, uh, and then each uh, wall is a little over two feet wide, so it makes a total width of about uh, a little over 20 feet. And uh, the abutments are further on than that. So uh, anyway, uh, they've, uh, it's been a bridge for over 100 years, and it seems like it's as strong as it ever was. We've had a few accidents on one corner where the people tried to straighten it out, but, uh, but it's still standing. Oh, it's a beautiful bridge, you know, and you you don't see too many stone arch bridges anymore, especially with four arches. Well, the thing about Ripley County did have about 17 bridges, arch bridges, and there's only two of them, four arch bridges. Is and it? one is here, and the other one was in Brown Township. And it's over uh, near Oleand, uh, uh, probably closer to the proving ground in there, I think, okay, probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I think it's supposed to be still standing yet. There was a there's a couple of stone bridges in the proving ground, mm -hmm. and. Uh, during uh, during the war when the proving ground had it, they said they drove tanks across those bridges, and they, they never never yeah, phased them. And they wouldn't bother them at all. Wow. So, uh, but anyway, this is a, a kind of a unique bridge, and it's always been referred to as the Four Arch Bridge, uh -huh. and it's over Otter Creek. Uh huh. So uh, that uh, uh, is the, the history of it, who laid it up or anything like that, how the construction went, uh, it's all. Unknown history almost. So, yeah. But most stone bridges is built from about 1870 to about 1910. Okay. That was the time frame. And then they started making them out. They, yeah, a different, yeah, different yeah. construction. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that uh, pretty well wraps up the uh, uh, my knowledge of the uh, Four Arch Bridge. And then what's interesting about, and I've seen this before on stone arch bridges, mm -hmm. is at the ends you'll see that they're rounded mm -hmm. so that the creek flows yeah. through and into the arches. Well, the reason for this thing setting the way it, it is setting, it's, uh, there's another creek come down this way, and, and to keep from having to cross two creeks, they got down here where they injected, so they both go under the same bridge. Huh. And that, uh, that's why it was setting crooked in the road. To, Okay. So it accommodated both creeks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that uh, maybe explains that a little bit anyway. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There is one other interesting bridge in the Osgood area. This one lane wooden bridge constructed in 1930 is located on County Road 25 and carries traffic over the CSX rail line discussed earlier in this video. The bridge is 101 feet long and 14 feet wide. Notice the steep arch it uses to cross the tracks. Also near the high bridge, you will find this stone bridge abutment from the High Bridge Park Covered Bridge. Built in 1884, it was 116 feet long and spanned Lawfrey Creek on East County Road 450. The bridge was washed away in the 1960s. In February of that year, an ice jam formed upstream on Lawfrey Creek. When it finally broke, a wall of ice and water washed the bridge off of the abutments and pushed it downstream through several turns in the creek before it was finally destroyed by the raging current. After the bridge was washed away, a suspension footbridge was installed in the same area and was in use up until about the year 2000.
thanks again for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Remember, travel slowly and stop often. See you later. Thank you. Bye.